Move Transition is one of the most powerful tools that you can find on PowerPoint and as PowerPoint explains to get the best results you have to duplicate a slide, move things around and apply the Morph Transition. So let's check it out. Let's just duplicate this slide and let's make sure that the Morph Transition is activated. That's beautiful. And now let's just zoom out a little bit and let's do a couple of changes. Let's increase the size of this laptop and let's increase the size of one scale. We can rotate them a bit as well and let's get back to the first slide and let's check it out on the full screen. And as you can see the morph transition definitely works, it seamlessly connects the first slide to the second one and does all of the animation magic. And there is so much more that you can do with the morph transition and for this reason I have recently added a new chapter to my PowerPoint Animation Mastery course which is all about the morph transition. You can go to pptskill.thinkythink.com and explore everything in more detail. And now let me just share with you a free lesson from the course that explains everything you need to know to get started with the morph transition. Hello my dear friends and welcome to the new chapter Morph Animations where you will learn how easy and fun it is to create animations using Morph Transition. So if you have PowerPoint 2019 or later or Microsoft 365 then you definitely have Morph Transition in your PowerPoint version. And before we jump into creating all of these incredible animations let me give you a little introduction to Morph Transition so that you know how it works. Ok my friends so there are so many things that we can do with the Morph Transition but let's start with the basics. Let's see how we can move, resize, rotate or flip objects on our slides. And on this slide I have inserted a simple text box, a shape, a picture, a video and a 3D model of planet Earth. And now let's just see how all of these guys respond to the morph transition. And as always feel free to open up lesson slides and follow along. And now let's just make sure that this first slide is selected, let's go to transitions and let's check what the current transition is. It is fade transition, so that's good. And now let's just duplicate this slide and now on the second slide let's choose the morph transition. Morph transition will do all of the animation magic. And over here you can change the morph transition duration and decide how fast or slow is going to happen but let's just leave it at 2 seconds. Alright my friends so now let's just try moving all of these objects around. So currently we are on the second slide so that's good. And now let's just try moving all of these objects slightly downwards. So let me just hold down the shift key and drag all of these objects downwards just like that. And let's see what happens. And this is how the first slide looks like. Ok and this is the second slide that has the morph transition applied to it. And now let's just click on this button preview and we can see the animation. That's super duper awesome as you can see all of the objects are moving downwards. And we haven't used any motion paths to achieve that, all we have used is morph transition. So let's check it out on the full screen as well. So as you can see morph transition is really powerful, you can animate multiple objects at the same time and you can even go backwards to the previous slide and all of the animations will play backwards. So that's extremely useful. However we can see one little limitation regarding the video. As you can see if the video is playing and if we start to transition to the next slide, the video stops and it resumes playing only when the transition is over. And by the way I have set this video to loop and start automatically. And before we continue my friends let's just create a little semi-transparent rounded rectangle that will help us to highlight different parts of this subtitle, ok? So let's just find that rounded rectangle tool and let's just draw a little rounded rectangle. Let's jump into the format shape options and for the fill let's use white fill and let's add some transparency for example 80%, ok? Let's make sure that this guy has no outlines, ok? No lines. And now let's just move this rounded rectangle over this first word, move. And then the rest of the slides will just have to move this rounded rectangle to the right side and highlight different parts of this subtitle. By the way in the first slide as you can see there is no rounded rectangle and we have this guy only on the second slide. And now let's just see how Morph Transition handles it. So this is the first slide and now we transition to the next one. And as you can see this rounded rectangle gets a little fade animation. So whenever there is one object on one slide and it is missing on the next one you'll get this fade animation. So if you are trying to create morph animation and all you are seeing is fade animation make sure you have the same object on both of the slides. And next my friends let's duplicate the last slide and let's see how well morph transition responds to resizing of the objects. Ok so morph transition is activated and by the way we can move this uh, semi transparent rounded rectangle to the right. And now let's just change up these guys. So for the text box let me just increase the font size. Ok. So let's just move it over here and for the shape we can actually resize the shape itself and as well let's increase the font size. And now let me just resize the photo, the video and the 3D model and I'll catch you in a second. Ok so all of the objects have been resized and now let's just give it a preview and as you can see Morph Transition does its magic. All of these beautiful shapes and objects are growing on the slide. 
Let's just check it out on the full screen. So let's start from the start. So first of all, we have the move option. OK, so all of these shapes are moving and now they're resizing and everything is working super duper awesome. That's beautiful. And as before, we can go to the previous slide and all of the animations will play backwards. So that's one of the superpowers of the morph transition. OK, my friends, and next let's see what morph transition thinks about rotation. So once again, let's just duplicate the last slide. And on this slide, the morph transition is activated, so that's good. And now we can just start rotating all of these shapes around. And now for the planet Earth, let's just use that simple rotation handle at the top. Later on, we'll use that special handle in the middle. And now let's just check it out. And as you can see, all of the objects are successfully rotating once again, thanks to morph transition. And now let's just check it out on the full screen. And before we do that, let's just make sure that we move this guy to the right side so that this time rotate is highlighted. OK, let's check it out from the first slide. So first of all, we can move objects around by using the morph transition. That's nice. Next, we can resize those objects. It's working as well. And next, let's just rotate those guys. It's working as well. That's nice. And as you already know, we can go back to the previous slides and all of the morph animations will still be playing. They will be playing backwards. OK, my friends, and next let's see what happens when we flip our objects on the slide. And before we continue, let's just duplicate the last slide and let's just move this highlight rounded rectangle to the right side so that it covers this beautiful word flip. And now let's just select all of the objects on our slide except the 3D model because for that guy we'll be using a different method. And now let's just go to rotation and let's choose this option flip horizontally. You can as well flip uh, vertically if you wish. And as you can see now, all of these shapes have been basically flipped horizontally. This is the previous slide and this is the current slide. So all of the objects are flipped. OK, and now for the 3D model, we can use this special handle inside of this 3D model. OK, and we can flip the earth to any position that we wish. Let's say we'd like to see what's happening at the North Pole, so let's leave it like that. And now let's go to transitions and let's check it out. And as you can see, all of these shapes are flipping. Well, text is flipping in an interesting way, but the rest of the guys were flipping pretty good. So let's check it out from the first slide. So this is the move transition. OK, now we resize. That's good. Now we rotate. Everything is still working. And now let's see how the flipping works. And it looks like that all of the objects are successfully flipping while the text is just rotating. As you can see, it's just rotating from one side to the other. But the rest of the shapes, the rounded rectangle, the picture, the video and the 3D model are flipping successfully. So that's a win. And by the way, you could cut your text, paste it as a picture and then it should be flipping correctly as well. And next, my friends, let's see how Morph Transition responds to color changes. So let's just duplicate this slide. And now on this slide, let's make sure that Morph is activated. And now let's just move this rounded green rectangle to the right side and let's change its color. So let's just use, for example, this bright uh, yellow orangey color. That's good. And let's change up the text color as well. Let's pick a dark uh, color so that the text becomes readable again. OK, for the rounded rectangle line, let's just pick a white color. OK. And now let's just go to the transitions tab and let's just give it a preview. And Skadoosh, it works like magic. As you can see, Morph Transition successfully morphed this green rounded rectangle into this orange one. That's awesome. And next, my friends, let's see what happens when we experiment with the transparency. So let's just duplicate this slide and on the duplicate, let's enable the Morph Transition. And let's just move this guy to the right side and let's add some transparency. So for the fill, let's use 100% transparency. Let's do the same for the line and let's do the same for the font color. OK, and now let's go to transitions and let's check it out. And as you can see now, this rectangle moves to the right side and it fades away at the same time. That's super duper awesome. And of course, you could achieve the same result by using traditional fade animations provided in PowerPoint. But now you know how you can do that with Morph. And next, my friends, let's see how Morph Transition responds to photo cropping. So let's select this photo on the left. Let's click on crop. And here you get two types of handles. You can use these black handles around the picture to adjust the cropping area. You can as well grab these white bubbles or the picture itself and adjust how this picture looks inside of the cropping area. But for now, let's just worry about those black handles. And before that, let's just duplicate this slide. OK, let's make sure that the Morph Transition is activated. And now let's just click on this beautiful turtle. Let's go to picture format. Let's click on crop. And now let's use these black handles on the sides to resize the cropping area. And once you're happy, just click somewhere on the slide or click on the crop button again to apply the changes. And now let's give it a preview. And as you can see now with the morph transition, we're getting this beautiful photo crop effect. And now let's check it out once again. That's nice. 
And now, my friends, let's undo a couple of steps and let's try out one more thing. So let's just jump back to the previous slide, okay? Let's click on this uh, picture and the previous slide. And now let's go to picture format, let's click on crop. And this time let's use these white handles. So we can hold down the control shift key to resize from the center, okay? So basically on the first slide the picture is zoomed out and on the second slide the picture is zoomed in. But let's just make sure that on the second slide we still have the morph transition applied, okay? And this way we get this beautiful photo zoom effect. That's looking beautiful. Let's check it out on the full screen. So first of all the photo is zoomed out and then it zooms in and that's really powerful. I think that this photo cropping technique is one of the most powerful things that you can create with the morph transition. And now my friends let's try out one more thing, let's go to the first turtle slide, let's go to crop options and let's just move the picture outside of the cropping area so that the picture practically becomes invisible. Just like that. And now let's go to the second slide, let's go to transitions and let's give it a preview. And as you can see now it looks like as if the photo slides in into the cropping area, that's nice. And by the way we can select all of this text on the first turtle slide and let's just move it to the right side outside of the slide window. And this way we should get a nice text sliding animation as well. And now let's just give it a preview and as you can see both the photo and the text nicely slides into the slide. That's beautiful. Okay my friends, so once again let's scroll back to the first slide and let's check it out what we have learned in today's lesson. So first of all we have learned that we can move uh, things around by using morph transition, we can successfully resize them, we can rotate them and we can flip them as well and for the text as you remember you can convert text to a picture and then that picture will be flipping perfectly. And next you can use different colors for your shapes and the morph transition will do all of the magic and the same applies to transparency. And finally you have learned this amazing photo cropping technique that you can use to create amazing animated slides. Just play around with those photo crop handles and experience the magic. And now my friends let me give you a few more tips that will help you make sure that your morph transition works perfectly every single time. So on this slide we have this green square and on the second slide we have this yellow orange circle. And let's say you'd like to morph that green rectangle into this yellow circle. So the second slide has the morph transition and now let's just check it out on the full screen. And as you can see now this rectangle just fades away and this circle fades in so the morph transition is not working although we have set the morph transition for the second slide. And now let me show you how we can fix that. So the fix for that is basically using the same name and you have to start that name with double exclamation marks. So here on the first slide let's just jump into the selection pane. Let's find this rectangle, ok and let's give it a new name, double exclamation marks and for example shape. And now let's make sure that we're using exactly the same name for the circle on the second slide. So let me just copy this name from the rectangle. Let's go to the second slide. And now for this oval, let's insert a new name. Let's use exactly the same name, double exclamation marks, shape. And now let's check out the morph transition. And now as you can see, we're getting much better result. The green rectangle is actually morphing into a circle. So that's nice. And next my friends let's try morphing two different photos and let's see what happens. So over here we have this picture of a cat, okay? And on the second slide we have this picture of a lion. So once again morph transition is activated but as you can see the morph transition is not working. We're getting that fade animation which means we need to use the same name. So let's just rename the cat photo to for example double exclamation marks photo, okay? And now let's use the same name for the lion photo as well. So let's jump to the next slide and let's paste in the same name for the lion photo, okay? And now let's check out the morph transition, let's see if those photos are morphing better. And now as you can see the cat is actually morphing into a lion, so that's awesome. So remember if you have two different objects and if you'd like to morph them, just make sure you're using the same name that starts with double exclamation marks. Ok my dear friends that's all for this lesson and in the next one we'll start putting all of this knowledge into practice. We'll be creating this wonderful parallax transition with the help of the morph transition. So, I'll see you there. Alright my friends, I hope you have enjoyed this free lesson from my PowerPoint Animation Mastery course. And if you'd like to join the course and save some money, just use the coupon code OneSkill100, which is valid until the 1st of November, and you'll get a $100 discount. All of the information is in the video description. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the course.